Okay, so we're going to talk about Trump. We we all know that what's been going on in the news. They're talking about this attempted assassination of Trump, and it makes you think: well, what what is his fate, or what is the next president's fate? I guess I should say, because if it is Trump, the scripture is very plain about what happens to him, and so we're going to go through that. Oh, let's get, go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to show you, it says, and you know, Amos and all of these books uh, of the 11 prophets, they were for the be for the people back at the time of Israel in the, in the Middle East, but they also are for an end time fulfillment. And so this is why we're going to cover this. All right, Amos 7 verse 10. Amaziel, the priest of Bethel. Bethel is means the house of, of God sent to Jeroboam, the king of Israel, saying Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the land of Israel. And the land is not able to bear his words. So we, we just have had enough of Amos and what he's been saying. So he must have really been making a stir. Uh, so going on in verse 11, and then Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. So he's telling them that Jeroboam would die. and that, But see, this is, when, this is when this gets really interesting. This is when it gets really interesting, because when you start looking, there was two Jeroboams in Scripture. Jeroboam 1 and Jeroboam 2, neither one of them died by the sword. When you're talking about sword, you usually are talking about war. Except they didn't go into captivity with Jeroboam. They didn't. And so let's go through this. Let's take a look at the two Jeroboams, okay? So who is this Jeroboam that's being talked about in Scripture? And that's my question. We're going to go through Jeroboam the 1. 1 Kings 14, 19. Everyone else, the king of Jeroboam did the wars he fought and how he ruled and all his records are in the history of the kings of Israel. Verse 20. And he ruled as a king for 22 years and he died and was buried. And his son Nadab succeeded him as king. So then you had Nadab. They actually would eventually go into captivity under this, the uh, king of called Hosea, and Hosea would not have been the prophet Hosea. It would have been the king Hosea. And so this is where Ezra, uh, the book of Ezra 1 and Ezra 2, both in chapter 13, tell how the king Hosea led the people out of the land of Israel and above the Black Sea. And that it tells you, it tells you the story in chapter 13 in Ezra 1 and in chapter 13 in Ezra 2. It's the same story, both of them picking up on the same account. Okay, so do y'all see that? So the so if we go back to this verse here, where it says, Jeroboam shall die at the, by the sword. Now, well, you could possibly say maybe his he was killed, right? But it doesn't say that. But the second part, Israel shall surely be led into captivity in their own land. That did not happen with Jeroboam 1 or 2. We're going to go through that and we're going to take a look. Now, going on here, and and then it says, verse 29, and once he, he began killing all the members of, this is the Yahweh, started killing all the fem, members of Jeroboam's family because he God was not going to allow him to serve and his family to serve anymore. And this is talking about the first Jeroboam. Then go into verse 30, and this happened because Jeroboam aroused the anger of Yahweh, the God of Israel, by the sins he had committed that he caused Israel to commit. See, he was the one that would not allow them to go back to Judah, to Jerusalem, to keep the feast, the feast of Passover and Sukkot. You see, so he he wouldn't allow it. So he set up feast a month later for Sukkot in his own kingdom. So this angered God. And so the first Jeroboam, there's no way they went into captivity with him. 
They didn't. All right. So that verse couldn't be fulfilled with Jeroboam. All right. Now, here we go. Second Kings 14, verse 28, the 15th year of the reign of Amizel, son of Joash, as king of Judah. Jeroboam, son of Johadash, became king of Israel. And he, he was king for 41 years. Okay. And I'm going to drop down here to 27. And it was not God's purpose to destroy Israel completely and forever. So he rescued them through King Jeroboam. So instead of them going into captivity under Jeroboam the second, they actually prospered under him. Do y'all see that in verse 28? And everything else that Jeroboam did, his battles, how he restored Damascus. Uh, see, look at all the cities that he take, took over parts of Syria. He took over parts of Asia Minor. He was a prosperous king. And so Israel, for, a, for the most part, prospered under Jeroboam II because he took the lands that they had not had since the time of, da of David. Uh, and I think that's really interesting when you look at that. Jeroboam died and was buried in, with the royal tombs. And his son, Zechariah, succeeded him. So, see, he didn't, Israel didn't go into captivity under Jeroboam II. They didn't go into captivity under Jeroboam one or two. Do y'all see that? And so that verse that we just read in Amos has never been fulfilled as far as I can tell because he's talking about how either Jeroboam one or Jeroboam two died by the sword. Well, you could make the case that maybe Jeroboam two may have died by the sword, although scripture doesn't tell you that. But it tell, he said, and they went into captivity. Well, Israel didn't go into captivity under Jeroboam and Jeroboam 1 and 2. They didn't. So this is a prophecy for somebody else that plays the role of Jeroboam. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And do y'all see this? So I'm just going to make the point here. And the Lord saw the terrible suffering of Israel. And there was no one at all to help them. And it was not the Lord's purpose to destroy Israel completely and forever. So he rescued them through King Jeroboam II. See, they didn't go into captivity under Jeroboam II. They didn't. They actually prospered. And, you know, if you compare this to America, you know that under Trump, this country prospered. There's no doubt about that. The stock market went raging. The, the unemployment rate was yeah, everything was really good under him. I'm not saying individually everybody prospered. I'm not saying that. But for, for a whole, for the nation, they prospered. Okay, and so under Trump, and that's the opposite of what we've seen going on now under Biden. Biden has uh, brought all these people, immigrants in. The inflation is out of control. So it, you, do you see that that verse that I just read, you can, it cannot be fulfilled you know, with Jeroboam 1 or 2. Do y'all see that? Because they didn't go into captivity. Now, I could bring up the list of kings so you could see them all, but it would be much later after Jeroboam 2 that, that Israel would go into captivity. Do y'all understand that? All right, so let me go on to the next slide. Now, now here's another verse, Zechariah 13, verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Now, shepherd just means a leader. That's all it means. It's it's a leader against the man that is my fellow. He's like me, said the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Do y'all see that? So he's talking about leader being smited, hurt. That's either hurt, damaged, killed, whatever. and then as a result of that, the people will scatter and I will turn my hand unto the little ones. That is the believers. So this is what he's saying here, that there's going to be a leader that gets smited, that word for smite, and y'all see it here, it means to hit, smite, strike, 
uh, slaughter, to kill. It, but it doesn't have to mean kill. It doesn't have to mean kill. Okay, so the person could be, uh, if it is the president that gets elected this next term, if this verse is referring to that, if it is, that person will probably, there probably may be another assassination attempt on him, or, you know, the war itself may, you know, trigger him to be brought into captivity or injured or whatever. I don't know the answer to that. But it tells you here that the shepherd is smitten, and that means he's going to he's going to be hit again. And then it tells you in four H two seven one nine that is the word for sword, and it means sword or knife. So there he's going to be wounded is what I'm telling you that whoever the new president is, he's going to be wounded. Because the book of Zechariah, which we're looking at right here, is written. Now, it has other things written to other nations, but a huge portion of it is written to America. So here we go. So there's a shepherd, which is a leader, that gets injured, okay, at least injured. And it says at that point when he's injured, all the uh, people will scatter. And that is the scattering, I believe, from the war. Because that verse is written in Zechariah 13, verse 7. And the next verse talks about two-thirds are, are cut off in Israel, but one-third remains, and that one-third repents and returns back. So they are scattered out of the land because of war. And that's really what it's driving at here. Now we get to Hosea 10, verse 15 which you can't get around this verse. All right, so, so shall Bethel, that's the house of God, do unto you because of your great wickedness in the morning shall the king of Israel be cut off. Now let's look at those words. The morning time, we, we can make an analogy that morning is early spring time frame. If you put it on a scale of, of a, and let uh, let me just see if I can show that to you. Yes. All right. A day can be compared to a year in scripture. Dawn would probably be from the time that you begin to having light coming in into the year. And that starts somewhere around February. I, I think they say in February 21, there's one more minute of light. So that, that could reference dawn time. Do y'all see that? And so then the spring equinox would, would represent morning or the, the really daybreak, right, also. But then you have Passover represents 9 o'clock. And then you have Sukkot representing 3 o'clock. Do y'all see that? The summer solstice represents noon. It represents the summertime. And then September 21st, which is the fall equinox, that would represent the autumn time of the year. And then it, we're told in scripture that at Sukkot is the end of the year. So around the time of Sukkot, somewhere after that is the actual end of the year. And the father's usually defining that by seven months. Do y'all know that? Do y'all understand? He's defining it by seven months because he's not including the winter. And then midnight is the winter solstice. So I went through to explain that so y'all can see that the morning time, this would be the time that we're talking about here, that where the king of Israel would be cut off. So it says, as we said before, because of your great wickedness, this is talking about the nation, the house of Bethel, which is would be Israel. The great wickedness is uh, in a morning shall your king, which is your in our case, is the president, he shall be cut off. Now, the word cut off, all right, it, it is H1820. It means destroy, perish, cease, or just to be cut off. He could just be removed from the job. Do y'all see that that's what it's saying? And then it says that this happens in the February, March time frame. So whichever year that I believe Whichever year that 
the war starts in this country, somewhere in the January, February, March time frame, probably more closer to February, March, right? Uh, that will be the time that the our king of Israel, that's our king, uh, our president will be cut off. And that's what scripture is telling you. Because these prophecies get fulfilled twice. They're going to be, they have a former fulfillment that happened with the old land of Israel. When Judah and Israel, uh, Israel went into captivity and went into war, but also they have an end time fulfillment. So this is telling you right here that whoever becomes president, they will probably be cut off. And so whatever that word is going to actually mean. The father made that word very open-ended, okay? But he put it in here twice, H, 1820, H, 1820, which means, oh my goodness, that he's drawing emphasis to it. If Trump is the one that gets elected, because he acts more like Jeroboam than Biden did, and of course he acts more like Jeroboam than Kamala Harris did. So it's very much possible it would probably be Trump that gets elected. If we're comparing Jeroboam, in this case, to Trump, if we're comparing him to Trump, because that verse that we talked about never got fulfilled. The people, Jeroboam 1 and Jeroboam 2, did not get cut off and the people go into captivity. That did not happen. But it it has a future fulfillment and it probably is going to be fulfilled at our time.